Not a good start to the final series before the All-Star break for the Toronto Blue Jays as they fall in the opener 7-1 to the Tampa Bay Rays and drop their record to 44-41 on the season. And I got a question for you. Did this game not feel like your prototypical Tropicana field type of game? You know, they scored seven runs. Other than the two-run double from Walls in the seventh, nothing was pretty at all. Bloopers, hit by pitches, all that nonsense. That And your offense doesn't get anything going. It's your prototypical Tropicana field type of game for the Toronto Blue Jays. It, it just felt like that to me today. But let's break this game down. And the Jays had opportunities early to break this game wide open. They couldn't do it. Top of the first inning, bases loaded, two out. Randall Gritchick can't get it done. Top of the second inning. Or, yeah, was it the second inning that Randall Gritchick came up again? I think it was Randall Gritchick came up, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, it was the top of the second again? No. Anyways, it was one of the, maybe it was the fourth inning. I can't remember. Either way, you know, he comes up again with runners at first and third, two out. Can't get it done. Top of the third inning, George Springer gets a two-out uh, uh, base hit, scoring Bo Bichette and putting the Jays in front one nothing. And with the way Manoa's been pitching lately, we're feeling pretty good here. Bottom half of the third inning, Alec Manoa hits Mike Zanino. I do this because when you're having your hand on a bat and your pinky is over the butt and it hits the butt, are you kidding me? That's called a hit by pitch. I, that's just brutal. I, I mean, whatever, it hit his finger, it's a hit by pitch, and they get a leadoff base runner. Then Brett Phillips, it was a slider over the middle of the plate from Alec Manoa, and he belted into the right, uh, the left, right center gap, and it's a double. Second and third, nobody out. Not a good scenario, especially right after you took a one nothing lead. But Alec Manoa bears down. With the top of the lineup up, he strikes out Brendan Lau. Big time strikeout. Then G-Man Choi walks. All right, bases loaded, one out. You're facing the youngin, Wander Franco. He strikes him out looking on a fastball in the inside corner. Big time strikeout for Alec Manoa. Now he's got two down. He's facing Austin Meadows. And in the very first pitch, Austin Meadows doesn't hit the ball hard. I want to hear, I want to see the exit velo. If you guys can look that up for me, the exit velo of that Austin Meadows hit. Because it wasn't a blooper. It was like a ball that he hit and it just kind of floated. It floated over Simeon and dropped into right field for a base hit, scoring two. Are you kidding me? The way that inning went, right? Hit, batter, double. Looks like they're going to break this game open or at least tie the game or take the lead with second and third. Nobody out. Finds a way to battle back and get two out with the bases loaded. And then that is the way they score two runs and take the 2-1 lead. Yeah, of course, drop a can of field at its finest. Then in the bottom of the fourth inning, Kevin Biggio oh, is there at third base, not very pretty, and it leads to a run. And I always say the, the, the plays that should be made got to be made if you're going to be a great team in this league. And yes, it was a hot shot at Kevin Biggio. I'm not going to say it was a little dribbler that he sh you know, should have made. It was an easy play. No, it was, a hard, it was a hot shot. But if it's a hot shot, right at you, why you turn your body going to the backhand? You learn in school. You learn as a little peewee guy. Body behind the ball. You know what I mean? I, I just don't understand it. Because he turns, and it goes off his glove and off his shoulder and into, into left field for a base. They have runners in the corners. Nobody out. End up getting the bases loaded. And uh, then G-Man Choi gets hit by a pitch, making it 3-1. And I'm just like, oh, my God. This, the plays that should be made, the blooper snot shots, gets hit by a pitch, and that's how they score a run. Waltz comes in to score, making it a 3-1 run raise, three one raise lead, and they haven't even done anything special to score three flipping runs. Yeah, we have yeah, the bases loaded, and runners in the corners 2 out. We can't get anything. And Simeon, his first two at-bats, he hits to the warning track both times. But again, nothing to show for it. And that's how the Rays scored three. Bottom of the sixth inning, G-Man Choi hits a two-run single. I mean, it was not even a hard hit ball. And I'm like, another one in Tropicana field time. And that makes it a 5-1 game. Bottom of the seventh walls, it's an RBI double. That was a good hit. It was the only extra base hit of the game for the damn Tampa Bay Rays. Kiermaier and Wendell come in to score 7-1. 
What else? I, I, I love the game of baseball, but sometimes it makes me want to flip and pull my hair out. I don't know if that's the Tropicana Field, the Rays, this, how important this series is, whatever. It was just kind of all at once coming at me. And let's get to the stats. Alec Manoa went three and two-thirds, allowed three hits, three runs, nine strikeouts, and walked three. Manoa had nine strikeouts facing a getting 11 outs total. And I will say this, because I, I used to pitch a little bit in my time. When you're on the mound and you know your defense maybe ain't the greatest with Biggio at third base. I don't care who you are on the Jays. You know Kevin Biggio ain't the greatest third baseman out there. And you know Boba has been struggling with, the, with throwing as well. Like There's a lot of things that have been going wrong with the Jays' defense lately. You feel like you have to be perfect. You know, you feel like you got to strike everybody out. And you can't have that mindset. Because it's just, everything's going to go wrong at that point. And for Manoa, look, he, nine strikeouts out of 11 guys, it looks amazing. He only allowed three hits. One was the double to Brett Phillips. Uh, the other one was the bloop snot shot single. And I forget about the other, the other hit that he allowed. But, you know, and he walked three guys. You know, I, I, I didn't think he pitched all that bad. The hit by pitches weren't great. The walks were like tight, full count, tough count, tough pitches to lay off, whatever the case may be. But I didn't think he pitched all that bad. The stats don't look great, but I thought he did okay. Tyler Sacedo came out of the bullpen and went an inning and a third. Had two strikeouts and a walk. So he did a great job in his inning and a third. I mean, it made sense why they threw him out there, right? Lefty. They have like, I think, if I'm not mistaken, out of the nine guys that were batting today, they had eight lefties out there. So it made sense to put out Tyler Sacedo for an inning and a third. And he did a great job. My counter would have been this. Trevor Richards pitched oh, two days ago because we didn't even play yesterday. So he was available. Trevor Richards being traded over to the Toronto Blue Jays, the, the stat that, I, that stood out to me, the OPS for left-handed batters this year, it's under 500. Put this into perspective. Randall Grichicks, who we all kind of have that love-hate with, has like a 750 OPS. Under 500! And for lefties this year. So why is Trevor Richards not out there? We hear he's that seventh inning, that seventh inning, sixth inning guy. Well, there you go. That's like what? The fifth, the sixth, the seventh inning right there for him. They didn't pitch yesterday. No one pitched yesterday. But no. They decided to go to Anthony Castro in a two-run game. And Castro, look, he has decent stuff. But we've seen over the last little while that he can be hit around. And he goes two-thirds an inning, allows one hit, three hits, and two runs. Jacob Barnes goes out there, two-thirds of an inning, two hits, two runs, two strikeouts, and a walk. So, you don't use Trevor Richards. You give up four runs. And it goes from a 3-1 game where it's still feasible to a 7-1 game where you're pretty much throwing in the towel. But no! They weren't throwing in the towel. You know Why? Because Adam Simber's out there in the bottom of the eighth. In what universe? Well, he needs to get some work in. Really? What if you need him tomorrow or the next day? Or and the next day? You won't have him for, the, for, for at least one of those. Because you use him in a 7-1 loss. I don't understand that. I, I really, really don't. But I'm not the manager. That's not my thing. And Dolis was great, too. Went an inning, uh, allowed, to, uh, what? He had two strikeouts, no hits, no walks. Great job for him. Simber, he did a great job. Went an inning, no hits, no walks, a strikeout. But you're down 7-1. There's no need to put him out there. So two things in there that I was really confused about. No Trevor Richards. And why is Adam Simber out there? That's my take. And everyone's going to yell at Charlie Montoya. It's not just him. Like, you're telling me Pete Walker... He has no say? Of course he does. You think the guys up top have the big say? Absolutely they do. So it's just, it, I don't know who the heck's calling the shots. It's probably not Charlie Montoyo. Whoever called the damn shots, it was not smart in my opinion. The Jays offense though, we can talk about how bad the pitching was, how bad the decision making was, the, how, how fluky the raise. The Jays only had four hits and struck out 14 times. It's just not good enough, man. 
right? And again, like, like I said off the top, in one of the biggest series of the year, if not the biggest series of the season, you throw him an egg. Well, not a full-on, you know, zero runs, but a dud. Let's put it that way. You know, and, and tomorrow you got to face Ryan Yarbrough, who's dominated the Blue Jays. Ross Stripling counters for the Jays at 110. And the crazy thing, and I don't know if I mentioned this in, in, in this video yet, but I'm going to do it again if I, if I did. I sound like a broken record. If not, then you guys are going to hear this. Coming into this series, if, I mean, obviously it can't happen now, but if the Blue Jays had swept the Tampa Bay Rays, we'd be sitting two and a half back of the Rays. Two and a half at the All-Star break. If you get swept, ready for this one? Eight and a half. You see that gap? That's why this series is so damn important. And losing game one, the way it happened, it's tough, man. Plus, Ryan Yarbrough's on the mound tomorrow. You got to win these next two. You win those two, then, hey, you're only four and a half back at the All-Star all break. You're probably right there with Oakland for the second wild card spot. You're, you're right there. You got to find a way to string some wins together, and the Blue Jays really haven't lately. And you got to beat the teams that you're trying to catch. You play the Rays here for two more. Right out of the game. Uh, I think you play the, 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 the Rangers coming out of the break. Then you have the Red Sox for like 7 out of 10 or something like that. You get some massive games coming up here. But you got to find a way to do a job. You know, losing this game today really, really did not start off well. Now, the great thing about baseball, you can hit the field the next day and right the ship. All right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and did not enjoy the game today, if you're a Blue Jay fan, smack the like button. I appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the video, your thoughts on the game. What'd you like? What'd you not like from today's ball game for the Toronto Blue Jays? And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Game two of the three games set against Tampa. Ryan Yarbrough gets the ball for the Rays. Ross Stripling gets the ball for the Blue Jays. 1-10 first pitch there at the Trop. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you guys then.